what's up YouTube check this gadget here coming to you with my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy S22 now just to give you a disclaimer up front this is not one of those full type reviews where you're going spec for spec to full-blown camera details all that type of stuff this is very casual like a casual conversation you would have with someone where you're out and they ask like hey what's your thoughts on you know so so it's more like that that's why I call it my thoughts and not a full detail review so just right off the bat, I do love the S22. Um, I had the S21. I enjoyed the S21. A phone I do wish I actually got and regret passing up was the S20. And that's because that was that the size of that phone was like perfect. I had it for a little bit, but I returned it. The size of that phone was perfect. And I and that was the last small phone that they did the curve uh displays on. As you know now, of course, they have the flat flat panels now. Um but that S20 was the last one they had the curve. I love the curve. I know a lot of people like the flat screens on the the phones. I like the curves. It uh, feels great to me. I really enjoy it on my Note 20 and um, now I got the S22 Ultra. I really enjoy the curved displays. The nice thing about the flat is that you can put tempered glass though. So that makes, that makes it uh, better in that case. But other than that, uh, I miss the curved displays. But um, I so I've always loved the smaller the smaller size phones. Um, you know, we when phones you know start getting more advanced, they were they, the screens used to be small. I remember back when the HTC HTC Evo came out, and that was like a four point three inch screen, and that screen was so huge back then. And it's funny to think about that now, because now we went all the way up to like six point seven. So being that this is a six point one inch screen, you know, and this is this is the smallest out the lineup. Um, it's kind of funny and I think that's why I enjoy it so much is because for a period we were going through having all these big phones and all the companies was like it, it seemed like they were in a race to make who can make the biggest screen phone and we just kind of got away from the small phone that's why I was happy when this is out um, and when Apple came out with the uh, iPhone mini to get back and cater to those people that like smaller phones and I think it I mean, don't get me wrong. Having a big screen, more screen real estate is great. But in my opinion, it's only great when you're at home. Because when you're out, for me, I know when I'm out and I'm at the store, some my phone is usually in my hand because I'm I may be looking at lists. I might be scanning things, seeing what coupons or whatever, whatever. And so, you know, bigger screen means heavier device. Smaller screen, smaller device, lighter. So Especially with the Androids, all the manufacturers making big screens. So I definitely appreciate, um, you know, Samsung keeping this uh, smaller screen. Now, I mean, it is 6.1 inches. That's not like small in the grand scheme of things. Small is really, in this day and age, small is really like the iPhone mini uh, in this day and age. So with that being said, if you're looking for or if you're in the market for a smaller phone, you know, you can't go wrong with this. This is, um, and you like Android. You can't go wrong with this. Out of all the phone companies that make Android devices, uh, that use the Android software, uh, Samsung has always been my favorite. And I think the main reason that they are my favorite is because of their interface. Um, you know, they just have their, they just have their own software on top of there. You know, for me, Android just by itself is just a little bit boring without, you know, some type of um, manufacturing having their, their overlay theme on top of it. And Samsung has always been my favorite. I think right after Samsung was LG, but now we know LG is no longer. Um, HTC used to be like right there with Samsung, but you know, of course, HTC been gone a long time ago. So um, that's why I didn't really include them. And so Samsung, LG, I usually like theirs. And those are pretty much my two favorites since HTC is no longer. Um, well, LG is no longer either. So that's why I've always gravitated towards the Samsung devices over Google Pixel type devices for me. It's just because stock Android is just a little boring for me. I mean, you know, stock stock Android keyboard versus, you know, Samsung's, I'm um, not keyboard, calculator versus Samsung calculator. The Samsung calculator is much interesting. And I know you're like, why are you bringing up a calculator? But I use the calculator a lot. And Samsung by far is my most favorite calculator. 
even over the iPhone. Reason being is because I can see all my numbers I calculate here on the iPhone. I can't see that. Some other ones, I can't remember on Google if you can or not. Um, but something about Google annoys me with their calculator. I can't remember what it was. But Samsung's like my favorite calculator. It's just little things like that. Um, their calendar. I really like their calendar um, app that they have. Um, it's just little things that they have that I like. And uh, makes me want to, you know, when it comes to Android, buying an Android device makes me gravitate towards them versus uh, other other products, other manufacturers. So, is this a good phone? Yes, it's a good phone. The screen is bright. You know, the screen gets very bright. Um, what I do like this year, and I'm not sure if this is just on S22 models or if this is in the new software update. But I'm I'm thinking it's just in the S22 models because I did upgrade, update my software on my uh, flip to the UI Samsung UI4, and I don't get this um this button here. So what this button here is, so you know the one with the little A. Let me focus there. The one the first one with the little A is the eye comfort, and then you have another one that looks just like that with the little sun, but it has arrows pointing down. That's an extra dimmer, and I really like that feature. Um. Like, for example, on the iPhone, you can go into uh, the accessibility menu. You have uh, the reduced white point. And I've always looked for something like that on my Samsung phones, and I couldn't find anything like that. And I think it's kind of basically their version of that. It just brings the brightness down a little bit more. This makes more sense when you're uh, late at night. Then you'll understand why you want, want that, extra, that extra dimming down. Um... As far as, let me just try to think of any problems I have, because other than that, I really enjoy the phone. The only uh, slight issues that I've had was the thumbprint, this, the finger reader. So, initially, I put it on there. Oh, I'm out of focus. Initially, I put it on there, and then I put tempered glass on there, and it really wasn't recognizing it, so I, I redid it. And it, it worked fairly well. It's not as fast as I would like it to be. Um, I think it's just because of the tempered glass, perhaps. Sometimes I feel like I have to press a little harder. It would say press harder. Um, it like it gotten faster slowly from the beginning. But, um, you know, it's not as fast as I would like it to be. And then the face, the face ID is not um, always as responsive as I would like it to be. But I have that same issue on my iPhone. It's just, you know, the face ID, it just doesn't. It just doesn't stand hold up to a physical button of just being able to get your fingerprint. I think that's the ultimate. Like on my Flip 3, you know, I got the I got a fingerprint and it just, that's what I would prefer. I think um, if the companies can just build a fingerprint reader into the power button, that, uh, that would be best. I mean, on the screen is great, but if you want to have tempered, tempered glass to protect your, you know, your investment here, because, you know, replacing these screens costs a lot. Um... They were going to have to make it so it can read through the tempered glass uh, a little more faster. Otherwise, I think they should just put it in the button here on the power button. Um, so other than that, as far as th that's the biometric stuff, um, I haven't had any issues. You know, I've always liked the way Samsung has their pictures have uh, taken. I've always liked that. Um, I did look at a picture. It does look a little soft. But uh, when you zoom in and stuff like that, but that was just like a couple pictures. I didn't I haven't went too deep into it, but I've always liked the way uh, Samsung take pictures for us, the way they do their coloring. You know, with Samsung, you know, they uh, over exaggerate the colors a little bit. And, you know, that's going to appeal to some and then some people might not like that type of style. So it's really just a personal preference, just like how some people might not like this overlay, like. I don't personally like Samsung's new icons ever since they went to these icon styles. I don't know. I don't like them that much. <laughs> um, they've always annoyed me just slightly, but, you know, they're functional. You know, they're functional. So, um, what else can I tell you about the phone? As far as the hardware, hardware feels great. Um, on this particular model, I know it's matte. I'm not sure if all of them are matte black. Not matte back, black, but have a matte black back. Um, so, you know, in the hand, it feels good. I don't have too many issues. Um, I haven't had any issues. I definitely haven't had any issue with the phone. 
but you know it's hard to you know give like a total review when you haven't had it like a couple months you know i feel like you gotta have it a good 60 days to give like a true you know thorough review oh battery i think the battery lasts you all day i definitely put it through um at least a good five hours of just like heavy screen one time and you know i still had well probably at least 20 percent left or something like that so battery life should be good let me show you the battery chart that was on here i don't know if that helps you if that will help you so for example right we're at 87 percent right now and it says i have one day 16 hours left and then let me uh click that and it gives you this little chart here telling me so this is my battery use two days and 11 hours ago you know showing so a nice gradual declining uh, line there and here's the last seven days for those that are want to know about the battery so like i haven't been doing like heavy heavy use but um i have had days where i have to use it all day running the app or whatever so yeah the screen's very responsive screen's very responsive um screen is great everything is good um i don't think you'd be disappointed at all if you was to get this device wouldn't be disappointed at all so i mean i think that's pretty much it uh if you guys have any questions uh feel free to leave them below i will uh do my best to respond in a timely fashion uh i would recommend getting it from the samsung website if you can they usually get pretty decent on the trade-ins um they usually give the best when they're you know when it's first coming out but i went back on there today and it looks like they're like for example they wasn't at first they wasn't giving me enough for my flip three i think they like when they were offering like i got this with the free case and some free earbuds and at the time when I was going to look at my Flip 3, I think they was offering like $350. And that was the reason I didn't trade in my Flip 3 and just ended up getting it, just buying it outright. But now when I go back in on there, it looks like I think they're offering either $550 or $600 for the Flip 3. So, you know, Samsung has this thing I see when they're offering gifts and other free stuff. You know, they kind of take your promo down. But now that they're not offering me that all that free stuff my trade value went up on my phone so yeah i i mean at some point you know sometimes I'm always giving a bunch of deals and things like that so you know you just gotta try to find out where you can uh get it only thing with samsung is you know you just worry about how fast their value decreases in their phones and i think that's because you know like when you first get the phone samsung gives you so many heavy discounts and things of that nature well before you're trading so the only thing about Samsung phones is I found the resale value is just not as excellent as, say, the iPhone, per se. Um, that's why, you know, try to avoid paying full cost for it if you can via your trade-in when it first comes out or if your carrier is giving you extra trade-in or whatnot. So just try to find something like that. But other than that, I mean, I, I don't see you. Even if you did decide to buy it outright, I mean... You know, you, you can't be going wrong. It's just, it's a great device. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not complaining. If you're in the market for a smaller type phone device, great screen, great build quality. You know, you can't you can't beat it. So till next time, later.